بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي العظيم Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته والقول بالحق وإن عز والله bless me to speak the truth though it be painful Beautiful segment from Dua Makaram al Akhlaq by our fourth Imam, Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. And that this segment by itself needs nights and weeks of discussion. That's why we just brought one segment tonight, but rather than like other nights, we brought two segments of this beautiful Dua. This segment needs a lot of discussion. And even one night, 45 minutes, couple of nights, couple of weeks doesn't do justice to this beautiful segment and the importance of haq, the truth, which everyone claims that they have the truth. Every ideology, every school of thought, alaykum as -salam. Within a wife and husband difficulties, within parents and kids, within two brothers, having an argument, everybody claims that they have the truth. When it comes to the time of disagreement and the time of argument, everybody claims that I have the truth. My statement is the truth and is the only truth. If we were allowing one another and thinking that we might be false and our statement will be false, and we are falsifiable, we wouldn't have any more discussion and argument. We would have had a normal talk. I would think that I might be right, I might be wrong. If the person was able to prove me wrong, Alhamdulillah, thank you, and I'll accept it. And if not, I would have respectfully just leave the discussion. But what gets us to argument and then arguments to anger and an anger to rage is that I believe that I am 100% with the truth and the other side of the dialogue, other side of the argument is the falsehood himself or herself. Imam is teaching us very beautiful segments. Oh Allah, bless me to speak the truth though it be painful. Meaning, it can come a time that we have to tell the truth and it is painful. We have to accept it. Why Imam didn't say, oh Allah, bless me to just say the truth. That's it. He knows, again, it comes a time within argument, within fights, within discussion that I have to say, yes, you have the truth. And what you say is truth and I was false. What is the meaning of the truth? There can be different meanings to it. Truth in front of falsehood. That truth can also mean justice versus oppression. It can be right versus wrong. Imam is not identifying any of these specific. Imam is saying truth in general, be it versus falsehood, be it against oppression and be it against being wrong. Speaking the truth can be painful in many places. Number one, when a time 
comes that I have to tell the truth about an individual or to an individual that he has hate toward me in his heart. But still, I have to tell the truth. That becomes painful. He's showing anger and rage toward me. But what he says is the truth. What I have done, it was wrong. And he is saying it. And he is right. But he's saying it with an anger and rage. I have to tell him, you have the truth. What I did, it was wrong. That moment becomes very, very difficult. We'll try to protect ourselves. No, I was right. Even though I know I was not right. I was wrong completely. So saying the truth in this scenario becomes very difficult. Another place that the telling and saying the truth becomes difficult when it's against ourself. When it's against our own desire and will and our nafs, it becomes very difficult. And our nafs, alaykum as -salam, resist. Resist us telling the truth. And it does whatever it is to justify what we have done. So we don't have to come to tell, yes, I'm sorry, what you say is the truth. And I was false. It becomes very, very difficult when it's against us. Because within our nature, we don't want to be offended. We don't want to be harmed. We want to always be on the right side. So when we say, I was on the wrong side, and that is the truth, it becomes very difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within the Holy Quran that has been sent for you and I and for mankind, in chapter 4, verse 135, Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu Allah is talking to us. O oh, you who believe, Kunu qawwamina bil qist Stand out firmly for justice. Again, the truth. Shuhada'an lillah walaw ala anfusakum As a witness to Allah, even though it be against yourself. Awul walidayn or your parents, be it against your parents. Wal aqrabin, be it against your kin. In yakun ghaniyan aw faqiran, be it the rich or the poor. Doesn't matter. You have to stand firm with the truth, with the justice, with what is right. Be it against yourself. How many of us we are willing to say that our parents in this matter, they were wrong? Respectfully, again, we all have the base respect and then we're talking afterward. We know that is the common ground. But no, my blood starts getting to the rage that how can you say my parents were wrong? And this argument of our parents, and we do because of our parents, this argument has been completely rejected by Quran. Not saying that the parents are always wrong, no. I'm not saying that they're always right. No. I do think because my parents did it, it's been completely rejected by Quran. Rasulullah comes and tells them, why you, why you worship what you worship? They say, our parents used to worship. Quran says, tell them, you don't know and your parents didn't know and both of you guys are astray. That is not a judgment. That is not a logical argument because of my parents. No. If it's against your parents, that becomes difficult. And it was difficult for people to accept the new religion that Rasulullah is bringing and follow it and completely turn their back to their parents. It was very difficult for people. Don't think, we take it for granted that we are born Muslim. We are born within the lovers of Ahlul Bayt salam, And we have been milked by this love. We're not, we have not been challenged. We haven't seen difficulties of turning your back to your family, to your parents again respectfully and tell them this is the new path I have found that I want to follow. And we think it's difficult to say to a sin, no. We think it is difficult for us to say to something wajib, yes. Shaykh, it's difficult for us to apply our wajibat. Shaykh, it's difficult in this day and age in Western countries within college and universities to protect ourselves from haram. It's difficult. Look at the life of a convert. They have to change their life 180 degrees different. What they were doing, what they were saying, what they were eating, 
whom they were being with, what they were drinking, how they were performing their prayers and rituals, everything changes. Allah says, be stand firmly. Allah knows that staying on the truth needs firmness. It's not easy just telling the truth and yeah, alhamdulillah, everybody's accepting me, mashallah, everybody's going. No, Allah says firmness is needed when you stand by justice and the truth. And another verse, chapter 5, Surah Al Ma'adah, verse 8. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, kunu kawamina lillah, shuhada and bil kis, wala ya jiramanna kum shana'an kawmin ala ala ta'dilu. Adilu! Huwa akrabul taqwa. You who believe, again, Allah is talking to us. Us as a believers, or you who believe, stand out firmly for Allah and be just witnesses and let not the enmity and Hatred of other make you avoid justice. When everybody's agreeing for me to tell the truth and be with it, it's easy. But it becomes very difficult when I tell the truth and everybody is going somewhere else and I have to stay. Is it easy? Of course not. And Allah knows it. And He says, make sure. Do not let the enmity, meaning what? When you tell the truth, you will have enemy. When you tell the truth, you will have enemy. That's why Allah says, and let not the enmity and the hatred, means what? When you tell the truth, people will hate you. Let them. Who should be happy with us? People or Ahlul Bayt and Allah? Whose satisfaction are we looking? Who are we living for? For people or for Allah and Ahlul Bayt? We get confused. We say the truth and then people come and they tell us a couple of criticism. We hear some kind of enmity we see and we face. We change our direction completely. A family comes and tells me that their daughter, because they believe in hijab, hijab for them is not part of the culture, it's part of the deen. So they know, and the mother is wearing hijab, around age eight, seven and a half, eight, slowly, slowly, from day four, five, the girl is seeing her mother is wearing hijab, and she wants to wear hijab here and there, she wears it, she takes it off here and there, she's still six, seven, by the age eight, eight and a half, nine, she has to wear hijab, according to the lunar calendar. That's wajib. And the parents support. That's the truth. That's the truth of Ahl al-Bayt, salam. Then start seeing people. How can you do this to your girl? Nine years old. Another family. Next family. Next family. Slowly, slowly see that this family is discouraged and discouraged. And people disassociate with them. Why? Because you are oppressing your little girl, nine years old, letting them wear hijab. It's not part of the deen. Who said so? These sheikhs, they come and they sit and they left. There is no hijab in Quran. This is the argument. And people support this argument based on the verses of Quran. I have seen this discussion. Based on the verse of Quran, they prove you that hijab is not wajib based on the verses of Quran. What beautiful scholars we have within our Western countries. And they have understand Quran completely, mashaAllah, to this knowledge. We are going to have enemies when we tell the truth. People are going to hate us when we tell the truth. Doesn't matter. We have to stand firm with the truth. Again, respectfully. Again, not letting us defending the truth get us out of our morality and characteristic and akhlaq. I have to defend the truth even though if it, has to, it comes for me to become angry and have rage. No. Tell the truth. And what will it do? After you have enmity from people towards you, and after people start hating you, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam and Imam Hassan and Askari. It's beautiful hadith by Imam Hassan Askari that Imam says, Ma taraka al haqq azizun illa dhalla, wa la akhada bihi dhalilun illa azza. We think. Honor comes from people. We think people honor us. The dignity that we want, we want people to dignify us. No.
Allah has the ultimate as an honor and dignity. Allah should make someone have honor and dignity. And if he wants, he humiliates an individual. The enemies of Ahlul Bayt, starting from the time of Rasulullah all the way, all the Khulafa and Ben Al Abbas and Ben Umayyah, how much money they spent to have honor and dignity. How much hadith they fabricated with their money to have, without their own money, the money of Muslimin, Baytul Muslim, Baytul Ma'il Bayt Al Ma'il Muslimin, to have honor and dignity. Where is it? Where is the honor and dignity? Where is it? Do you find anyone to come and say, I am from the lineage of Yazid ibn Ma'awi and I'm honored by that? My ancestor goes back to Ma'amun al Abbasi or Harun al Abbasi or have their grave or have a name, their name to be out there as an honored individual. It's not, it's gone. Why? Because they were not with the truth. Why? Because they hear, they heard this hadith that Qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That Aliyun ma'al haq wal haqq ma'a Ali. Where do we find the truth? And do you look at, we have to think, these are hadith, we just read it and then we just move on. Why Rasulullah says both sides? If you would have said probably means haq is here and Ali comes with haq. And then he says no. And then Rasulullah continues. He said this hadith, if we said every night 100 times, it's not enough. Rasulullah says everywhere that Ali goes, haq goes with him. Not that everywhere Haq goes, Imam Ali goes behind him. That, that needs for us a little bit to think about it. Everywhere Ali ibn Abi Talib salam goes, that is Haq. And Haq goes beyond after him. Because he knows what is Haq. What is the truth? He knows. And Haq chases Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then we come. We hold on to these philosophers. And to these poets. And to these thinkers. And to these ideologists and we think they, they will bring us some truth. Rasulullah said, Al-Haq, the truth, that's it. The truth is with Ali and Ali is with the truth. There is nowhere else that you can find it. That's why he knew that after him, he will be left alone. He said, people came to Rasulullah, what should we do with after you? He said, if you saw the whole, all the universe, all the people, they go one side. You see Ali ibn Abi Talib by himself goes one, go with him. He knew what will happen. He knew it. And it's happening today. It's nothing that, oh, may Allah curse those people that they left Ali ibn Abi Talib. What did we do today with our own current Imam? What did we do with him? Did we go after our Imam? Did we go and find the books of Ahadith of our Imam, Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Farajo Sharif? And get to know what he needs from us and apply it. Did we go after him or no? Where is the difference between me that I have not followed the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and I have not followed the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt and those people who saw Ali ibn Abi Talib and they didn't follow him? What is the difference? The only thing that they saw Imam and we didn't see the Imam. But if we are a believer and we believe in unseen Imam's presence being there or not there, the truth they have left it for us, we have to follow. They left Ali ibn Abi Talib Allah, except a handful of people. Salman, Maqdad, Abadar, that's it. And the same scenario 1400 years ago is happening today. Shaykh al Mufid, may Allah bless his soul, he has an argument that if today Imam Zamana has 313 companions, he will arise. He has an argument based on Nahjul Balagha and the hadith and the sayings of Imam Ali. He has an argument that if, um, if Imam has 313 today, he will reappear today. If we take this argument, what can I say about myself? Anything else I can say about myself? That I have not tried yet to become one of those 313. Why? Because truth, it's hard to say. Let's look at the hadith from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Beautiful hadith. These hadith are amazing. 
الإمام says لما حضرت أبي علي بن الحسين عليه السلام الوفاة الإمام الباقر says when my dad my father علي بن الحسين زين العابدين what is approach death was approaching ضمني he took me to him إلى صدره he hugged me وقال يا بني and he said oh my son oh my dear son أوصيك بما أوصاني به أبي I will advise you to what my father advised me. Means who? Imam Hussein alayhi salam advising Imam Zain Abidi. When his time of death comes, so Imam Hussein advised Ali ibn al-Hussein at the time of his death. And Imam Zain Abidi is advising Imam al-Baqir at the time of his death. وَبِمَا ذَكَرْ أَنَّ أَبَاهُ أَوْصَى بِهِ and Ali ibn, and he says that this is from my father to me, from his father to my father, and from his father to his. So father to father to father, at the time of death. Ya Bunay, what is the, what is the advice? Ya Bunay, asbir ala al-haq. Be patient when it comes to the truth. Wa an kana murran. Even though it can be bitter, be patient. Why sabr? Why patient? Because it's difficult. Why Imam says, follow the truth. Be with the truth. Imam says, Asbir ala al-haq. Be patient when it comes to truth. Wa in kana murad. Even though it can be better, be with it. So already, truth can be better. Truth can bring us enemy. Truth can bring us hate. But what's the benefit? We said the hadith already. It gives us honor and dignity. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be honoring us. If not, we can live our life the way that some people are living. Last hadith of today. قال الإمام علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام Again, أسبر على مرارة الحق be patient toward bitterness of the truth. وَإِيَّاكَ أَنْ تَنْخَدِعَ لِحَلَاوَةِ الْبَاطِلِ And be aware not to be misled by the sweetness of the falsehood. What else do we need? He laid out the foundation completely based on Quran and Hadith. We know, again, falsehood is better. Brings us enemy. Brings us hate. And... So, sorry, truth brings us all of this and falsehood is sweet. And Imam says, be careful. Be aware not to be misled with the sweetness of falsehood. Where do we need the truth? We think, okay, alhamdulillah, we're following the truth, we're following Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam Where do we need the truth? In our belief, number one. In our belief, in our aqeedah, this day and age is the day that every ism within our own faith is created to mislead people from the path of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam. I've said it and I will repeat myself again and we should repeat ourselves every night. We have school of thought within our own faith. Within the faith of followers of Ahl al-Bayt, every day new personality and followers that we are the followers of Ahl al-Bayt follow us we have to be careful so in our belief in our ahkam where are we getting our ahkam from are we following a scholar or am I my own scholar if we can stop this please am I a scholar myself or am I following a scholar? When it comes to all the materialistic life and the aspect of our materialistic life, we go to an expert. But when it comes to ahkam and deen, we become our own experts. Who said we have to do this kind of salah? Who says this kind of wudu? Who says this is halal? Who says this is haram? Who says it? The truth of Ahl al-Bayt reaches us via our scholars, our maraj al-taqlid. That they spend 
15, 20, 30, 35, 40 years for them to become expert in ahkam. One hadith or two hadith I learn, I think I can come up with my own fatwa. And I've seen it. One of the reasons I still, I still on Facebook, it amazes me. The community never stops to amaze me how they come up with their own fatwas and they put it on the Facebook and they tell everybody, this is the fatwa. Based on my analysis, I saw this. Based on my analysis from Quran and Hadith, a sister writes that hijab is not wajib within the deen. MashaAllah. Let me have your book of Risal, inshallah. You might have some followers, not some followers. You will have a lot of followers, sister. And they will come to you and they will relate to your fatwa. And every day comes new fatwa, new fatwa by our own young people or old people. We give fatwas. Truth in every aspect of our life is needed. Aqeedah, ahkam, akhlaq. These are the three pillars of Islam. Aqeedah, believe. Ahkam, our rituals, our practice, our jurisprudence, and akhlaq. And marriage, Ahlul Bayt, if we, when we say this hadith, Ali on Ma'al Haq wal Haq Ma'ali, we say, yeah, wow, wow, mashallah, what a beautiful hadith. But when it comes to marriage, and we have to go back to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, teachings of Ahlul Bayt, what is the best age for marriage? They have given us the guideline. No, that is not the truth. That truth is 1400 years ago. This day and age, that doesn't apply. When we go to prioritizing, is it more important to keep having PhD and getting married or getting married and then you can study? No, that truth, it's for, again, 1400 years ago. Ali and Ma'al Haq, yes, but in our Aqeed, I believe in him. In Ahkam, definitely. But these issues, I don't think they understood our time. Sheikh, time has changed. That was for people back in Arabia. Today, time has changed. So we see all of our youth. The only thing that they're concerned Education, nothing else. I'm not against education. I'm studying myself right now. I have one more class and I will be done with my bachelor. I am studying myself also. I'm not against education, but it's about prioritizing. It's marriage more important or education? According to the teachings of the truth, marriage. This might, some people might not like it. I don't care. It is my duty from this platform to say what I have read from the hadith. Everybody can go and research their own. When it comes to family relationship, the truth is there and our Muslim community is somewhere else. Within business, back in the days, within our Middle Eastern countries, back in the days, that again, this is very old. They used to, when somebody wants to become a businessman, do tijara, they used to go and study Rasa Makasib in Hawza, the book of Makasib. It's about deals and transactions. They would read the fiqh about transaction. How can transaction become halal? What is haram? How can we sell? How can we buy? How much money can we put on top of it? There's all the hadith. This is what we study in Hawza. They would, I don't, you don't have to become faqih. No, they would read Makasib. It's a book of Makasib. And then they will start business because they want to know how can their money become halal and how can it become haram? They have to be careful. But right now, mashallah, all of us, we are fuqaha when it comes to fatwa regarding business. Hijab, we talked about it. Social issues, all the truth is all here within the packages of the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt. It's all here. It's only good for the shelf. We do our life this way. Another hadith. Imam says, عودك إلى الحق وإن تعبت خير من راحتك مع لزوم الباطل. What, what were these people? We need them today. Their teaching is there, but we are not there. عودك إلى الحق. Imam says, your return to the truth, even though it accompanies exhaustion. It will exhaust you. It's tired to go back to the truth. If I have lived my life this way, if a sister has not worn hijab according to Fatima to Zahra as a role model, if she is a role model, if our role model is not Fatima to Zahra and say the Zainab Salamullah Aliha and the wife and the daughters of Ahlul Bayt and our role model is the celebrities, that's a different scenario. 
But if I have not worn hijab according to the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt and Quran until age 18, 19, 20, 25, I'm listening to the majalises, I'm listening here and there, here and there. It's difficult for me to put hijab. Nobody said it's easy. The first day is difficult. The second day is difficult. After that, it gets easy. When I wore my imam at year 2011, and I let go of all of my other clothes, I said, from today, this is me. Everywhere I go, in Mason, university, airport, everywhere that I have been to, everywhere like this, first day was difficult. Second day was difficult. Third day got easy. So if I haven't worn it for 20, I hear it, I want to wear hijab. My sisters are not wearing it. My mother is not wearing it. My school classmates are not wearing it. All these people that I go to the center, they're not wearing it. They're going to tell me, what happened to you? Are you okay? Have you lost your mind? In this day and age in America, you might wear hijab. People, you're going to go out. People might kill you. I haven't been killed since 2011 until now. I'm still alive here today. And if somebody, as I said, if somebody has to think of, if there is a possibility for somebody to become a terrorist, a person would look like this, it would become a terrorist. Or not. I have not. I'm still alive. But again, the truth is somewhere. Imam says, return of you, for you to return to the truth, even though it might exhaust you, but it's better for you. Khayrun min rahatika. It is better for you than the comfort that you have within living within falsehood and baqat. It's better for you. See, it's still half of my lecture still, and the time is about to finish. How much we can talk about haq and the truth that we claim, verbally claim, within my akhlaq, within my aqaid, within my ahkam, but in action. So, very important point. First, inshallah, we are convinced that we have to follow the truth. Yes? Yes? Some people are, some people are not convinced. Yes? If you are convinced, show me with your loud salawat. So we're convinced we have to follow the truth in every aspect of our life. What did I say? In every aspect of our life. For the third time, we have to follow the truth in every aspect of the, our life. And that truth for every aspect of our life has been introduced to us by Ahlul Bayt They have not left us an avenue or an aspect that they have not educated us. But we have to go to them. Every aspect you bring me, we can go and research and find a hadith of Ahlul Bayt that give us guideline. Within this aspect, within this lifestyle, this is what you should do. This is haq and this is batil. So first... After we are convinced, which is very important, some people still think that I'm still on the right, I'm on the truth, I'm on the right path. I'm with the truth with my, again, aqeed, ahkam, and akhlaq. What my personality, my characteristic is right. If I, if I have that mindset, I'm not going to go and seek for the truth. I won't, because I think I'm right. But I have to give doubt to myself that I might be wrong. So when that doubt comes, then we have to go and find the truth. Truth is not laid on the ground and on the streets and everywhere. No, we have to go and find the truth. If a sister, until now, she's not convinced that hijab is wajib, according to the Islam, even one hair cannot be out. If she's not convinced, go and research. What did I say? Research and read about hajar within the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, not within the teachings of Sheikh Mustafa. No, go and find it within the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Put the effort, put the research, read. You come to conclusion that hajab is wajib for you. You come to conclusion that the age of marriage is what the Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt say. You come to conclusion that the wife and husband relationship should be like this according to Ahlul Bayt. You come to conclusion with that truth. So we find the truth, and then we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow it. The story of the night. It becomes very difficult. Don't think again. Don't think that truth is there, obvious, bold, big fund. No. 
Even for the people who are righteous, it becomes a time that they are very, very confused. And they're living a life of perplexity. What is the truth? Famous story. You all know it. Battle of Kamal. Jamal. Camel. A person comes to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Let's have salawat by his name. He says, Imam, I'm confused. I don't know. I don't know who's the truth. On one side, Aisha, Talha, Zubair, the wife of the Prophet, two companions of the Prophet. And on one side, Ali ibn Abi Talib, you, I'm not sure who is the haq. Who is the truth? I'm confused. Imam gives us the guideline. Imam said, you've been confused because the method, the means, the tools for you to find the truth, you have got the tools wrong. If I want, I'll give you an example. If I want to measure this place, I have a couple of ways to measure it. I bring a, a rope. I don't know how long is the rope. I bring it and I put it from here to here. And I want to measure it. It doesn't show me. I put it this way. The rope doesn't show me. It doesn't have measurement on it. What tools I need? I need a measuring tape. If I bring that, so I have to have the right tool. Imam said, Truth cannot be known by the action of the people. Know the truth, you find its people. And no falsehood, you know its people. So first, you have to get to know the truth on yourself. You have to go and research. Basically, Imam is telling him, go back and read. Rasulullah said, Ali ma'al haq wal haq ma'a Ali. Rasulullah said, everywhere Ali goes, Ali is the truth. Rasulullah said, Ali ma'al Quran wal Quran ma'a Ali. Rasulullah said, after me, my com community will divide into 73 sects. One is successful, that is Ali and his Shia. Rasulullah said, Rasulullah said, Rasulullah said, go do your homework. And then when he's standing here, it's easy for you to know that, yes, Ali is right. The truth and the other side, batil, kufr. Kufr. According to the hadith of the other side, not our hadith only. It's easy for you. But we take a person, whatever this person says is the truth. Who said so? Imam didn't say, I am the truth. No. He says, know the truth, you will know its people. And know the falsehood, you will know its people. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at this moment, as a time of dua, the time of maghrib, all of us were fasting, is the time of inshallah acceptance of the dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, bless me to speak the truth though it be painful. That's a dua. That's a dua, al akhlaq, that we have to make determination that from now on, in every aspect of my life, I will follow the truth. Let's have a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj. Everybody, all of us together, is a time of acceptance of the dua. With the loudest of our voices, we read dua faraj. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshaAllah, our idea in this month will be the hastening of the reappearance of our beloved Imam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everybody. Allahumma kull waliyika hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala ba'i fi hadhi sa'a wa fi kulli وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوات